Hello everyone, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the A-30 Challenger tank, which was a somewhat forgotten tank that served with the British Army in World War II, as it was a tank that was developed in large part on orders from the War Office to merge the newly introduced 17-pounder anti-field gun that proved its worth against German and Italian tanks when it was being fielded during the middle of the North African campaign in 1942. The gun itself would be mounted on the existing hull. In this case, it would be a modified version of the Cornwall Cruiser tank. The history of the A30 Challenger tank would be started when the reports of the newly introduced 17 pounder field gun's performance reached the ears of the British War Office back at home. The reports detailed that the gun was able to pierce through any tanks that the Germans fielded and it proved an excellent addition to the army's anti-tank armaments. This then led to the British General Staff to ask the Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company in 1942 to develop the necessary mounting for the 17-pounder gun to fit within a tank. However, at the time, all British tanks that were in service had turrets that were far too small to house the 17-pounder gun primarily because most of them were designed with being equipped with the 40mm 2-pounder gun or the 57mm 6-pounder gun, and so a new turret would have to be designed, and this would fall on to a company called Strotert and Pitt of Bath, who designed the turret for the A30 Challenger tank that would later then be mounted on the prototype tank called the TOC-2. The turret design was quite tall, as the War Office at the time demanded that the turret was to be designed to not only fit four crew members within their turret, a gunner, a commander and two loaders, which was primarily done to ease the burden of loading the 17-pounder's ammunition. It was also demanded that the gun should be able to depress at an angle of minus 10 degrees all around the tank, but the space requirements resulted in the turret rain on the Cromwell tank having to be increased from 56 inches to 66 inches. The next step in the design process would be the re-engineering of the Cromwell hull, now that it had to fit a much larger turret. The hull was then modified by lengthening the hull from 6.35 meters to 8.14 meters, along with the installation of additional bogey rule to each side to offset the increase in weight. A total of three pilot tanks would be ordered and the work on the first prototype would be started in May of 1942, with the first one being finished in August of the same year. Things however didn't paint a rosy picture for the early life of the Challenger tank, as the weight of the tank was increased to just above three tons heavier than the Cromwell tank, which led to some problems with the suspension. The turret rotation rate was also slow, which led to an electric turret drive being added to improve its rotation rate. Another problem would be the 17-pounder gun and its ammunition. Despite the much larger turret, the gun breech and ammunition took up more space than the existing 6-pounder main gun of the Cromwell, which meant that the amount of ammunition that you could take before the crew members started looking like pack sardines in a tin was relatively limited and so the crude position that would be used for the whole gunner would be removed, and the now empty space being used to store some for ammunition. Another modification would be that the armour thickness of the tank would be reduced in some areas to lighten the weight of the tank. Testing trials would be started around the turn of 1943, as at the time, the new news of the upgunned Panzer force equipped with a longer barreled 75mm KWK-40L-43 and the new appearance of the German Tiger tanks in the North African campaign quickly made it to the ears of the British War Office, who then quickly ordered tanks to be built as rapidly as possible that would be equipped with a 17-pounder gun. An order of 200 tanks was issued, but due to the various problems that were experienced during the trials and the continuing teething issues caused delays in the design which led to the general staff began to investigate whether it was possible to mount the 17-pounder gun in an M4 Sherman as a backup plan. The specifications of the A30 Challenger tank would be that the tank's length was around 8.14 meters, width being around 2.78 meters, and the height being around 2.9 meters. 
the tank's weight across the different sources differ, between 31.5 to 33 tons. The tank would be powered by a Rolls-Royce 600 horsepower Meteor engine, which gave the tank a top speed of 32 miles per hour or 52 kilometers per hour. The tank would carry a crew of five and it would be equipped with a 17 pounder gun with 42 rounds of ammunition and a coaxial turret mounted machine gun. The armor of the tank would be around 63 millimeters at the front and 62 millimeters at the sides of the hull with the rear being around 32 millimeters thick. The turret armor was around 63 millimeters of armor at the front and on the last 100 tanks that we would produce, the frontal turret cheeks would be up armored with additional 25mm plates. The size and rear of the turret was also 40mm thick. The problems with the project was to continue to plague the A30 project, to the point where the first production tanks only started rolling out of the factory in the very next year in March of 1944, and by this point the A30 Challenger tanks role would be chained to a tank killer, in where it would operate in units serving with other cruiser tanks, as the tank crews and command would at least be somewhat familiar on how it operated. The tank would then be sent to the European theatre right after D-Day, in which it was unable to partake in the operation due to the lack of any deep wading proficiency, and it wouldn't be deployed until very later that year. The divisions that the tank would serve with included the 4th, the 7th and the 11th Armoured Division, the 8th Kings Royal Irish Hussars, the 2nd Battalion Welsh Guard and the Guards Armoured Division. The Challenger tank would also be fielded by non-British forces in World War II, with the 1st Polish Armoured Division receiving some in 1945 and the 1st Czech Armoured Brigade receiving some tanks during the Siege of Dunkirk in 1944. When it was fielded, the tank crews initially disliked the Challenger tank, as they were trained on the much smaller Crusader and Cromwell cruiser tanks. One of the reasons was that it was more lightly armoured and the turret was also much taller than the Cromwell tank. Other problems include the common occurrence of the tracks being thrown off due to the smaller either wheel, but this problem was solved by replacing it with a much larger one. Over time, however, the crew's opinions on the Challenger tank would change as it was more quicker and nimble than the M4 Sherman Firefly, thanks to its 600 horsepower engine. The tank would continue to see service with the British Army until the very end of the war, with the last serving tanks then being used by the Czechoslovakian Army. 22 A30 Challenger tanks would be purchased by the Czechoslovakian government and they would serve with 11th and 23rd Tank Brigade, as well as the 13th Independent Tank Battalion until in 1941 when they were sent to the reserves before being scrapped in 1959. Two examples of a challenge tank would survive. One of them is in the Overloon War Museum in Overloon, Netherlands, which was acquired in 1976, with the tank being in decent condition and on display. The final quote-unquote surviving tank was at the Isle of Wight Military Museum until it closed, with that particular tank being in poor condition with heavy corrosion and several missing parts. It was initially awaiting restoration before the museum closed, and in the small amounts of information that I could find on this particular example, it was stated that it would be transferred to the Botherton Tank Museum for restoration but I haven't seen any further mentions of this particular tank after 2013, but any further updates would be noted in the description down below. And that was the history of the A30 Challenger tank. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this content, please put a like and subscribe to get more videos like this. If you have a vehicle that you want to know about, let us know in the pinned comment section down below.